Kia ora team, in our latest video we are going to be looking at energy systems um, as part of Achievement Standard 1.2. So first of all, where does our energy come from? Basically it comes from three types of food sources. Carbohydrate, an example of that is the pasta you see there. Fat, an example of that uh, are the nuts and proteins. And the example of that is that fat, juicy, T-bone steak. The first source of energy we're going to look at is carbohydrate. So carbohydrates are broken down into glucose and stored in the muscle as glycogen. They are easily broken down into the state, which is why they are a primary fuel source used by the body during exercise. Carbohydrates are important for exercise and athletic performance. High levels of stored glycogen before endurance exercise can help prevent fatigue. Carbohydrate intake during exercise, particularly exercise lasting longer than one hour, can help increase performance and prolong time to fatigue. After exercise, diets high in carbohydrate help replenish muscle glycogen levels which enhance your recovery. Examples of good carbohydrates include vegetables, beans, fruit and whole grains such as those found in breads and pasta. There are some bad carbohydrates and they're considered bad because they're broken down by the body too quickly to provide an adequate source of nutrients, vitamins or energy. Examples of bad carbohydrates include soft drinks, cakes, cook cookies, chips and alcohol. These bad carbohydrates should be limited to special occasions and excessive consumption of them can lead to weight gain, increased risk of diabetes and an increased risk of heart disease. Fat is twice as energy dense as carbohydrate or protein, providing 9 kilocalories per gram as opposed to 4 kilocalories per gram for carbohydrate and protein. Along with carbohydrates, fat is the primary source of energy at rest and during exercise. Although many people think of dietary fat as something to be avoided, fat is important for athletic performance and good health. Examples of some good fats include nuts, avocado, olive oil and oily fish. These are called monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats. Examples of bad fats include fatty meats, chicken skin, cream, cheese, ice cream, fried food, cakes, pastries and donuts. These are called saturated and trans fats. As nice as some of these, these foods sound, uh, these bad types of fat can increase your LDL cholesterol levels which isn't good for your health. Proteins are broken down into amino acids. Amino acids and proteins are the building blocks of life. Proteins are used for energy when the body is in starvation mode. Protein is a nutrient that is critical to both the structure and function of the body. It is more appropriate to use the term proteins rather than protein because there are a multitude of proteins in the human body. Prior to the 20th century, many cultures believed that consuming the meat of an animal resulted in a direct transfer of that animal's strength and prowess to the athlete. Examples of protein include unprocessed meat, poultry and fish, dairy, eggs, beans and nuts. So how does our body use what we eat? Cells don't get energy from food. The food must be broken down into ATP, or adenosine triphosphate. ATP is a form of energy one can use immediately. It is needed for cells to function and for muscles to contract. This image shows adenosine combined with the three phosphate bonds which make up ATP or adenosine triphosphate. When energy is needed, ATP needs to be broken down using an enzyme known as ATPase into ADP or adenosine diphosphate. This process breaks the high energy phosphate bond and provides energy for use by the body. And an equation you may see in a textbook is ATP equals ADP plus energy for biological work plus P. Considering energy systems, the human body has three main systems for producing energy for our physical activity. They are anaerobic alactic, anaerobic lactic, and aerobic. 
Each system works independently or in unison with the others depending on the type of activity we are doing. Each of these systems provide the body with energy by producing ATP, which as we mentioned previously is our energy currency. The anaerobic electric system is also known as the ATP PC system. Small quantities of adenosine triphosphate and phosphocreatine are stored in muscle and are used quickly. This system is mainly used for explosive sports. Activities requiring less than 30 seconds of maximal effort such as weightlifting, jumping, throwing, 100 meter sprints and 50 meter swims. It's used as an ignition for all types of activities. The activity is so brief that no oxygen is required to produce energy and no byproducts are created. The ATP PC energy system is like being in first gear when driving a motor vehicle. It is needed to get you going in a hurry. The problem is you can't travel very far in only your first gear. The anaerobic lactic system creates energy for the body by converting glucose into ATP without the use of oxygen. This source is mainly used for short sports or activities requiring less than 3 minutes of effort such as gymnastics, 200 meters to 1000 meters uh, running events, 100 to 300 meter swimming. This system differs from the alactic system since it creates lactic acid as a byproduct. Lactic acid decreases the pH in the muscles and makes them less efficient or shuts them down. Lactic acid buildup is the pain you get in your muscles when you have run out too fast for too long. The transition from the ATP PC system to the lactic system is like moving from second gear into first gear while driving a motor vehicle. This system will keep you going for a longer period of time until you can eventually move into your third gear. The aerobic system relies on a constant supply of oxygen to create ATP from glucose, fats and proteins. This system is used for long sports or activities requiring more than 3 minutes of continuous activity, for example distance running. The aerobic system will kick in after 2-3 to three minutes of sub-maximal effort. Energy production depends on the intensity of the activity and the availability of oxygen. Continuing with the theme of gear changes, the aerobic energy system is your final gear. Once you're in this gear, you continue exercising or you can continue exercising for long periods of time as long as you're refueling with food every so often. You can only get into the final gear when the heart and lungs are providing enough oxygen to work in muscles to produce ATP aerobically. Until that time, you're stuck in second gear, still producing that nasty lactic acid. This diagram shows the predominant energy pathways when considering the type of sport or event. The shorter events, re requiring high speed and explosive movements, require the immediate and short term anaerobic alactic and anaerobic lactic systems to provide energy. Events requiring a reasonable amount of endurance for sustained periods require the aerobic energy system to provide energy. The type of energy system used and the interplay between them depends on the frequency, duration and intensity of the activity and the fitness levels of the individual. This chart shows examples of sports that use anaerobic and aerobic systems as their predominant energy source, but also in the middle, sports that require a mixture of energy systems. Each energy system can be trained to allow it to become more efficient by providing energy for the body. As with any type of training, these energy systems will adapt to the stresses that we put on them. So by matching the training to the energy system you want to improve, adaptation and improvements in efficiency will occur. And you'll see some examples on the next slide. So some examples are Anaerobic electric training, increasing the efficiency at which ATP and PC stores are replenished after high intensity activities. Or anaerobic lactic training, increasing the lactic acid threshold of the muscles involved. Or aerobic training, increasing the efficiency at which oxygen is absorbed and utilised by the body.